Venice is presented by Lancia. Pua has arrived at the 66th International Venice Film Festival. Let's see what the festival has in store. I got a man with two left feet. And when he dances not to the beat, I really think that he should know that his rhythms go, go, go. I got a man with two left feet. And when he dances not to the beat, I really think that he should know that his rhythms go, go, go. Does he watch? Nicolas Cage and Eva Mendes are not particularly pure in their performances in the film The Bad Lieutenant. However, both actors give passionate portrayals of police, pain and paranoia. It gives me great pleasure to award the Distinguished Service Cross to Sergeant, now Lieutenant, Terrence McDonald. Well, there, there was, there was uh, the, 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 uh, the excitement about working with Werner Herzog because I'd grown up on his movies and I feel that his movies have a real cosmic uh, connection. They, they go into areas that can be kind of surreal and um, spiritual in a very strange way. And I felt, having observed Klaus Kinski's performances, that he would, he would allow me or tolerate me going right up against the edge. I'm interested in sounds. You know, I'm, I'm interested in... in um, I think all art aspires to be music on some level. That's what, who we are as person. Person means where the sound comes through. And so I like sounds that are kind of uh, like static electricity or like Stockhausen, you know? And I also like sounds that are like jazz, and then I like sounds that are like rock, and I like sounds that are like Beethoven. Unbelievable. Ah! Lieutenant. We don't hit women down south. I'm going to give you a chance to make some money the old-fashioned way with a cop protecting you. I think uh, if, a, if an actor has an opportunity to work with such a legend, you take it. No matter what the role is, you just you take the opportunity because uh, there are very, very few living legends that can do what he's done. I will say that my character uh, is the light in the movie and the redemption. And it's interesting because you think, well, she's a prostitute, she's a drug addict, how can she be the light? But sometimes in life, you know, Purity isn't always light, you know. She's a tortured light and she's a complicated light, but she still is a light, so I find that very beautiful. As the light, as the light, she's the light in this film. And what I think is beautiful about that is because we usually think light, we usually think an angel, and we have a very white vision of it. Um, and that's not what she is, but she's still the light. E la luce. Crime and coincidence. Wesley Snipes stars as one of the three police officers whose lives change and intertwine in the film Brooklyn's Finest. He's, uh, and that's the unique nature, well, quality about these guys in this, this area. The pres presumption is that they are one way or the other, either all bad or all good. But that's really not the case. A lot of guys, they have good natures. Circumstances make them bad. Anger, frustration can make them do bad things or make bad choices. But for the most part, I believe they, uh, they have good hearts and they're good-hearted and they're good nature. Yeah, there's something with Antoine, you know, I don't know what it is, but <laughs> something about those type of characters in this <laughs> cops and robbers thing that he likes, you know? <laughs> Rough. I don't know if you could say that Brooklyn is a microcosm of all of America. I think it represents an aspect of American culture. 
that's live and, and real, vivid to this day. Uh, but then, you know, you have other areas where it's peaceful and lilies in the field and people skipping through the, the daffodils. <laughs> you know, I didn't grow up there, <laughs> but I like it. Peace, love and goats are the solutions to suffering and war, according to a military sect in the film The Men Who Stare at Goats, presented at the Venice Film Festival. The Predator. The Predator. Lynn, that's just a plastic... Ah, oh. see? You're mine now. The film's spectacular cast, including the cosmic comic coupling of Clooney and McGregor, give us a new age dimension to the theme of war. The Predator is 100% biodegradable, it's friendly to the Earth, and it can hurt you in 100 ways. It has warrior capacities, and it looks a little bit funny. Jesus, stop it! This time, the war is hot, not cold. The weapons are atomic displacement, not atomic bombs. And the fear we fear is based on the fact that this comedy is said to be true. Funny thing is, you could see this just laying around on the ground, you would never know that it has such lethality. Eyeballs. Pure Passion is about to interview the charming Ewan McGregor for the film The Man Who Stare at Goats here at the Venice Film Festival. Let's go. So The Man Who Stares at Goats is, has a military theme with a twist of paranormal, a nip of new age and goats. Yes. How did you embark on this journey? Well, we had, a, had to play, I had to play the, the audience's character in a way. I had to, where's your accent from? Australia. Yeah. I, <laughs> um, I had to, um, play the audience if you like so uh, my character doesn't know anything about this psychic section of the American army and um, so he's asking all the questions and therefore finding out all the answers and you know through our my scenes with George where I'm asking him about these things we the film flashes back to see them so it's, it's quite a it's quite a tricky part to play sometimes those the kind of um, audience parts where things happen round about you and you can unlock it for the audience, I don't know. It's good though. And you and George are quite diverse in your backgrounds and styles. How did you create this magical chemistry that we see on screen? Well, just because we got on, you know, uh, it's a wonderfully written um, relationship from start to finish, you know. Um, my character is a journalist and his, his wife leaves him for his editor, his one-armed editor. And, um, He's broken and he decides to take himself to war. So he goes off to Iraq to try and embed himself in a, in a, in a regiment and go off to war, you know, to prove himself as a man. But he doesn't get out of the hotel. He's in this four-star hotel in Kuwait, which is where a lot of journalists stand up, I think, when they're <laughs> covering wars. And he, um, so he ends up uh, meeting George's character, who then takes him on this, this crazy road trip through Iraq. Do you think that the world still needs Jedi warriors today? Yes. Yes. What would you have to change? I do. Change? I think. I think. Um, I think we're a bit. Uh, I don't know where our great leaders are, our cultural leaders. You know, our iconic figure, figureheads. You know, we have them. So I don't know whether they're not there. And I, I think we used to have them more in music and writing and art. And I don't know that we do so much, do we? I don't think so. Speaking of music, you yes. once sang that the most important thing is to love and be, and loved, be loved in, in return. return. Do you think that would resolve some of the problems we see in the film? Yes. I think that would resolve some, a lot of the problems in the world, wouldn't it? I think so too. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you, very you very much. much. Cheers. Thank you. Whereabouts in Australia are you from? From Brisbane. Oh, okay. As avid cinema goers, we are used to being wooed and wowed, shocked and deceived by the ever advancing technology, special effects and illusion that the big screen brings. Tonight, on the seafront terrace of quintessentially win-win Azimut, we have witnessed a spectacular defiance of gravity by Erica LeMay, leaving an audience of skeptics lost for words. No second takes, no special effects. 
just the pure human body. We just saw the most amazing performance here at the Win Win Asimo Terrace. Can you tell us what this performance means to you? Well, it, it was a world premiere really tonight because I was performing for the first time we were doing that uh, incredible creation we did with Douglas Kirkland. So it was unexpected for all of us because we didn't know what would happen really. It was with the water also at the end and everything. So we had a lot of surprise also from the inside, but uh, all over it was an incredible thing for us also. It was absolutely beautiful. When did you discover to have this amazing talent? I would say that it's more a question of work than talent, really. It's, uh, I, I will not uh, say how many years, <laughs> but many years uh, of training, six hours every day, and from little, so. And if you really want it, you know. And can you tell us your favorite thing about Italy? Oh my God. Food. Yeah. Food. Thank you very much for your time. Please welcome on stage with Eric Alemé, Mr. Douglas Kirkland. We're here at the Win Win Asimut party speaking to Douglas Kirkland, who's about to show a very interesting monster here tonight at the Venice Film Festival. Can you tell us a little bit about the the exhibition that you're going to put on now? Well, what we're going to put on is 50 years of my life, up on the screen for 20 minutes. It's a fast, hard to put 50 years onto 20 minutes, but I've worked around cinema since I was very young, and I photographed people like Marilyn Monroe, Elizabeth Taylor, Sophia Loren, and there's a long line, uh, Marcello Mastriani, and the line is very long, and I've had a very good life working around cinema, and that's what we'll be talking about here this evening. And it's a pretty big privilege to have such a, a long contact to see the evolution of cinema over such a long time. What do you think of cinema today? I love cinema. I've always loved it. This is my second, only my second time here at the festival because the last time I came in 1966, long time ago. I was working for United Artists photographing different people at that time. And here I am back again and I love it because Italian, Italy and the Italian world is a favorite of mine. And what about cinema? Italian cinema has always been something, a world which I've had a special love for. But I all, all cinema. And how do your photos take people into this world? I, the pictures I've done through the years, well to begin with, my principle is I am secondary to the person in front of the lens. If you were the star and I was photographing you, I would be all focused on you. It's not me, it's you, the star out in front. There's only one star, and that's the person in front of the camera. How do my pictures take them? you there? I hope when I work with my camera and, and the various stars whom I worked with, that I can connect them with you, the viewer. That's my job. And if I'm successful, you feel like you're actually standing there with them and talking as we are talking right here at the moment. Lancia Delta Executive, la potenza e lo spirito.